Um, I suppose the first point to make as a data protection commissioner is you don't lose your data protection rights when you go online because data protection law applies whatever the medium used is. And the internet, the internet is just a medium of transmission of information. I suppose the parallel with the offline world is a written document. If you want to protect this confidentiality, you must put it in an envelope. And it's up to organizations offering services on the net to provide you with the appropriate envelope. That's unless you opt not to use it, which some people do. And for example, if you choose to reveal all on a social network or a blog post, well then you haven't used the envelope. I'm sure Paul will comment in more detail on the type of envelope you should be using. Now when you sign up to a service on the internet, that's whether you pay for it in cash or by allowing the service to use your information to serve you ads, uh, that's the Facebook model obviously, the service provider, at least if it's based in Europe or has a European headquarters such as Facebook, it must respect your basic data protection rights. They must tell you what personal data they're collecting and how they're going to use it. They must apply appropriate security measures to the data. That's the online envelope. And they must give you access to that data on request and delete it when it's no longer necessary to retain it. In some ways, the internet mirrors the offline world. So, for example, you expect an online financial service provider to take stringent precautions to protect your online, your online actions. And they usually do, obviously also out of self-interest. Now, if you choose to share information via an open blog post or an unprotected post on a social network, you don't really have any expectation of privacy. That's provided you know what you're doing. Now, things become trickier when there are different expectations on the part of the, of the individual and the organization that holds the data. And this is where people often complain to us about, say, their dealings with a school, an employer, or a sports club. Now, data protection caters for the different flavors of privacy. It defends your right to share information as much as your right to keep it private. And education is really key here people really need to have it drummed into them that once it's out there on the internet, it's very hard to recapture it. The newspaper reports over the past few days about young people being expelled for cyberbullying may help to get this message across. Other reports of people being sued for online defamation should also help to underline the difference between saying something face to face and putting it on the internet. It can be a very costly mistake. And I'm not sure that people fully grasp the difference between the offline and the online world. They're both part of the real world, but with differences that really matter to people. Now, data protection law is technology neutral, which is why it has been possible to apply it to situations that did not even exist when data protection laws were first enacted. In framing new European law, uh, the European Commission, in its proposals published earlier this year, has focused on some internet-related challenges, notably the so-called right to be forgotten. Now, this has been welcomed by some as a necessary step to reassert the individual's control over individual data. But it has been challenged by others who, for example, point to the potentially conflicting right to freedom of expression, and I'm sure Tom will have something to say about that. There's also the practical issue of how far you can realistically expect an organization to secure deletion of data that may have been reproduced in many other parts of the internet ecosystem. Another significant challenge is how to capture meaningful consent when the individual is using a small screen mobile device. And as internet access is increasingly through such devices, this is becoming a key concern of those concerned with privacy. But organizations wishing to do business in Europe are going to have to deal with these challenges. Data protection is now a fundamental right in Europe, written into the basic EU treaties. And failing to respect this right is going to be costly, not only in terms of reputation, but also because of the very heavy penalties that data protection authorities are going to have to impose under the new European data protection laws. But I think it's important to stress that individuals also have responsibility to protect themselves. If people do not challenge excessive data collection, it is more difficult to bring about needed change. So there's lots of challenges. 
and these also apply to our office as we try to provide credible oversight of the European operations of the many internet giants that have chosen Ireland as a base.